Sorceress Stabber Orphan begins by showing a place called the Tower of Fongs, the most prestigious sorcerer training institution in all of the Kisalhima continent. That night, a male student named Krylon Silo finds his master, Childman, unconscious. Meanwhile, his adoptive sister, Azili, is seen in great pain after performing a forbidden magic ritual with Childman, which fails. During the horror, Krylon Silo witnessed Azili who suddenly transformed into a giant dragon and tried to escape from the Tower of Fongs. However, the other magicians were already standing guard and immediately attacked the giant dragon. Knowing that the dragon is his sister, Krylon Silo tries to protect her, then the dragon manages to escape from there. Five years later, Krylon Silo decided to leave the Tower of Fongs to find Azalee's whereabouts and changed his name to Orphan. He now lives in a town called Todokanta. One day, Orphan gets into trouble with the twin dwarves, Volcan and Dorton, who are reluctant to return the money they have borrowed from him. Because of that, he beat them up, forcing them to return the money. Not long after, a policewoman arrives to arrest Volcan and Dorton because they are criminals who often commit fraud. Not wanting to be imprisoned, they rushed from there. The policewoman didn't just stand still and threw her stun gun at the twin dwarves. However, her shot missed and hit a male citizen who happened to be passing by. Vulcan and Dorton finally managed to escape, while Orphan was forced to help the policewoman to heal the man with his magical powers. Back to the Tower of Fongs, Childman finally wakes up after being in a coma for five years since the magical ritual failure incident that turned Azili into a giant dragon. On the other hand, unable to find Vulcan and Dorton, Orphan returned to an inn managed by a man named Bagoop. During his stay in Todokanta, Orphan chose to stay at Bagoop's inn and became good friends with his son, Magic, who desperately wanted to become a great wizard like him. Magic noticed Orphan's dragon emblem and knew it was the emblem of the black magicians from the Tower of Fongs. Because of that, he greatly admired Orphan who had lived and studied magic in the Tower of Fongs. Knowing that Magic's mom was a witch, Orphan told him he might have magical talent like his mother. Orphan didn't mind teaching him about magic, as long as he was willing to pay for it. Not long after, Falcon and Dorton came to see Orphan, offering him a job while telling him they would earn a lot of money after doing the job. The scene then switches and shows the dragon Azali appearing somewhere after disappearing for five years. The magicians who knew of its appearance rushed to attack the dragon, so she was forced to flee from there. But before leaving, she briefly looked at each other with her former master, Childman, who had recovered and led the attack. Elsewhere, Orphan has to disguise himself and play the role of a wealthy merchant's son to attract Maribel's attention, the eldest daughter of the wealthy everlasting noble family. Vulcan and Dorton plan to make her fall in love with Orphan and get them both married. However, because he didn't prepare enough, Orphan became confused when Maribel's mom asked about his family's origins. When Maribel and her mother leave the room, he gets into an argument with Vulcan and Dorton, saying that he disapproves of their plot to deceive the everlasting family and assumes that their lies will be discovered. Not long after, a girl entered the room and introduced herself as Cleon, Maribel's younger sister. She said that Maribel and their mother had known the lies of those who wanted to deceive the everlasting family and had called the police to arrest them. Knowing that Orphan can use magical powers, she also told that several years ago, a black magician from the Tower of Fongs met her late father to leave a sword and asked him to keep and protect the sword. Elsewhere, Childman, who had arrived in Todokanta City with other magicians, was greeted by a young man named Harsha, one of the black sorcerers of the Tower of Fongs. They now served as the secretary at the Witch Association in Todokanta. After that, Azeli also appeared there and attacked the Everlasting family's residence to retrieve the sword. Cleom, worried about Maribel and her mother's safety, rushed to find them accompanied by Orphan, where he finally reunited with the dragon Azeli after she had disappeared for five years. Azeli, now in the form of a dragon, does not recognize Orphan, her adoptive brother and best friend, so she attacks him and rushes to take the sword she has been looking for. When she was about to leave, the black sorcerers blocked her, who then launched an attack on her. However, Orphan again protected Azalea and fought the witches, so she managed to escape from there. The scene then switches to the past where Orphan still lived in the Tower of Fongs, where the strongest magicians studied. At that time, the most talented young wizards, including Azalea, Orphan, and Harsha, were gathered into one class and under Childman's tutelage. Besides the three of them, a young man named Forte met Cleom's father and entrusted the sword to the Everlasting family. The other students were a girl named Letitia, who was Azalea's cousin and two young men, Comicon and Corgan. However, the most talented of them were Azalea and Orphan. Before living and studying at the Tower of Fongs, Orphan, Azalea, and Letitia were orphans who grew up in the same orphanage. Because of that, their relationship is very close like siblings. Back to the present, 
orphan is thrown into prison for trying to deceive the Everlasting family. However, he is finally freed by Harsha who then takes him to meet Childman. After finally meeting Childman, Orphan asked about the ritual he was about to perform, causing Azalea to transform into a dragon. Childman then says that he asked Azalea to help him activate the magic power of the Sword of Baltonders. However, the magic of the sword transformed her into a giant dragon. He assumed she must have been in a coma just like him for five years and returned to her senses after five years along with him. He reveals that he had asked Forte to secure the Sword of Baltonders at the Everlasting Family Residence so that no one else would use the sword's power and end up like Azalea. Because of that, Azili stole the Sword of Baltonders and hoped to restore herself to how she was with the sword's power. Childman also tells Orphan that Azili is one of the few sorcerers that can harness white magic which can control time and other people's thoughts. He then asks Orphan to help him find her, as he needs a lot of great wizards to overthrow the bloody August. Orphan then asked how they found her. Childman said that he had previously implanted a magic spell on the sword so that they could trace its whereabouts. After packing his things at the inn, Orphan went to the Everlasting Family Residence and repaired the damage caused by Azeli with his magic power. As an expression of gratitude for Orphan repairing her house, Cleum gave him a ring saying that the ring was handed over to her family, along with Baltander's sword. Orphan immediately realized that the ring was the magic ring that belonged to Azeli that had been shown to him. At that time, she told him the ring could protect the wearer from disaster. After that, Orphan met Childman and joined the Black Sorcerers on a mission to find Azeli's whereabouts. Besides Harsha, he met his former classmate, Kamakon, who was on the mission. Childman also asks a white sorcerer for help to deal with Azalee who is quite talented in using the white magic. Orphan joined the mission, wanting to save Azalee from Childman and the black sorcerers who intended to kill her. After that, Childman and his party members entered the forest, suspected of being her hideout. Meanwhile, Cleon, who had released Vulcan and Dorton from prison, decided to take back the Sword of Baltonders and followed Orphan into the middle of the forest accompanied by them. However, on the way, they were confronted by a beast. Orphan, realizing Azalee's existence, separated himself from the group and tried to find her first. Not long after, Orphan finally found her whereabouts, but the dragon attacked him indiscriminately. He tried to block the attack because he didn't want to counter Azalee's attack and hurt her. However, Orphan could no longer withstand the attack and ended up blowing quite a distance away. Childman and his party members finally arrived and immediately launched an attack on Azalee while Kamakon tried to heal Orphan. When they attack her simultaneously, the white sorcerer attempts to seal her with his white magic. However, as the giant dragon, Azalee became much more powerful so that she could easily defeat the white sorcerer who eventually died. Orphan, who saw the existence of the Sword of Baltonders, took the sword and rushed to run away from the fight. Childman, who knows this, then orders Harsha to go after him. At the same time, Kamakon must fall and die after Azalee's dragon shoots fire at him. Harsha blamed Orphan for Kamakon's death because his friend had died. They then engaged in a fierce battle until finally, Cleom arrived and managed to knock Harsha down by hitting him. Cleom and the twin dwarves then asked Orphan to help defeat the beast chasing them. With his magic power, he managed to defeat the beast. Orphan and Harsha rush back to the battlefield and find that the black sorcerers have died, and only Childman is alive and is fighting to the death against the dragon. They immediately help their master against Azili. Orphan then realizes that Azili's dragon has great abilities like Childman who is predicted to be one of the strongest magicians in the kingdom. However, when Childman was about to launch a fatal attack on the dragon, Orphan did not stay silent and protected her. Knowing that Orphan will only interfere with his mission, Childman then stabs him while saying that he will heal Orphan after defeating the dragon. Ultimately, he destroyed the dragon's body with his magic power. After Childman healed him, Orphan rushed over to the dragon's severed head. Vaguely, he could still hear the dragon's last words about regret and saving someone. The next day, he meets Childman and reveals that the dragon killed last night was not Azili but Childman. Hearing that, Azili, who was in Childman's body, was very surprised because Orphan had known everything. She turns out to have exchanged her soul with Childman when they look at each other for the first time after five years in a coma. She decided to switch bodies with him to make it easier for him to find the Sword of Baltenders. Childman, who regretted his actions, didn't seem to mind swapping bodies with her, especially after she used white magic to control her mind. Orphan was very disappointed in Azili who had the heart to kill their master, so they got into a fight. However, her attack didn't work on him because previously, he had swallowed her magic ring that could protect him from any attack, even though the ring's power could only be used once. In the end, he decided to let her live and hoped she would regret her actions. After that, Orphan decided to go somewhere by using a horse carriage. However, unexpectedly, Cleom and Magic sneaked into the horse carriage and said they wanted to go with him. 
Playam said that she wanted to go on adventures and visit many places because all her life, she had only lived in Toto Kanta. Meanwhile, Majik demands Orphan's promise that he wants to teach him about magic, so he decides to follow him. At first, Orphan did not agree with the presence of the two of them. However, after Majik promised to pay Orphan if he was willing to teach him and Clayam promised to be a chef to make delicious food for them during the trip, he finally accepted them as his companions. He turned out to be heading to the city of Tafram where the Tower of Fongs is located. Sometime later, Orphan and his companions had traveled for two weeks, and Majik had mastered magic, which he instead used for unimportant things. Because of that, Orphan then scolded him. However, he did not deny that Majik is quite talented as he has mastered some magic in two weeks. Yet, Orphan took at least three years to master it. After that, they continued on their way, and Orphan told them they would be in Tafram in three weeks. Seeing a ranger post at the end of the road, Orphan steered his horse carriage away from the main road to avoid the rangers associated with the Kimluck Church. He explained that the Kimluck Church is a religious organization with enormous influence, even on par with the royal family. However, the Kimluck Church had a grudge against witches, so it would be difficult for them if the church found out about them and discovered Orphan's identity as the Black Sorcerer. That night, Orphan and his companions decided to spend the night in the forest. Majik, in charge of looking for food, accidentally encounters a giant snake about to eat him. However, Majik manages to get rid of the giant snake with his magic power. Unexpectedly, a girl who happened to be there noticed his action using magic power just now. She then asked him if he was a magician and what were he doing in the forest alone at night. He innocently told her that he was looking for food for his master. She then introduced herself as Fianna and told Majik she was from a village called Sacred Heart in the middle of the forest. Majik then asked Fianna to take him to her village so he could get some food, but she refused because she thought it would be dangerous for him who could use magic power. Not long after, a group of men from the Sacred Heart village arrived. They immediately confronted them by saying that anyone who entered the forest without permission, especially magicians, would have to be punished. Fianna tried to protect Majik by saying he was just a student and the magician was her teacher. However, the man named Mac Dougal, the village leader didn't seem to care and fired his gun at Majik, causing him to collapse unconscious. On the other hand, Orphan and Clayam also faced attacks from the other Sacred Heart villagers. But he defeated them with magic power and rushed to find Majik's whereabouts with Clayam. <laughs> Meanwhile, Vulcan and Dorton are held captive by the villagers in the Sacred Heart Village because they are trying to sell a strange jar. Not only that, but Vulcan also told them that a witch was hiding in the forest, so the villagers thought that they were the witch's spies. Not long after, Orphan and Clayam finally arrived near the border of the Sacred Heart Village, where Orphan saw a flag with the crest of a wolf residing in the village. He then told her that the wolf on the flag represented a magical creature called the Deep Dragon. He concluded that the villagers worshipped the Deep Dragon known to hate human magicians. He explained that in ancient times, there was no magic in this world. However, one time, six brilliant beast races had managed to steal the magic used by the gods. The six beast races came to be known as dragons, and the smartest among them was the weird dragon named Norpnir. Since the dragons are celestial beings who cannot reproduce, Norpnir then teaches his magic to humans. However, this only angered the other dragons and ordered the humans who worshipped them to hunt down other humans with magical powers. In the present, when many celestial beings have become extinct, the influence of the dragons is no longer what it used to be. However, there were still a handful of people who secretly formed groups to worship them like the villagers of the Sacred Heart. Soon after, a large wolf appeared, a deep dragon named Fenrir. Seeing this, Orphan told Cleon to go to the ranger post and report what happened in the village to them while he would try to find Majik's whereabouts. However, shortly after Cleon left, Orphan was intercepted by MacDougall and some of the villagers who then launched an attack on him. At first, he managed to escape their attack. However, Fenrir was suddenly standing behind Orphan, and with his magic power, Fenrir could easily bring him down, even if only by telepathy. After Orphan was captured, the villagers gathered to listen to what the Deep Dragon had to say through Fianna. She turned out to be an intermediary because only she had the power to communicate with the Deep Dragon. She then told everyone that the Deep Dragon would eradicate the human magicians in this world. After that, MacDougall met Orphan, locked in a holding cell, and asked for his identity. One of the villagers, Salua, arrives there and tells him that Orphan is one of the black sorcerers from the Tower of Fongs, judging by the dragon emblem on his necklace. On the other hand, Fianna brought food to Majik who finally regained consciousness after being unconscious for quite a while. She had also healed him with her magic power. MacDougall then went to her and asked her to come with him somewhere. Seeing Fianna, who seemed to want to stay with Majik, MacDougall then reminded her that he was the one who had saved her, and because of that, she owed him and had to obey all his orders. 
He uses her because only she can use the Deep Dragon's magic power, which he will later use to find the forest's heart. Magic tries to defend Fiena by saying that she doesn't belong to anyone, so she doesn't have to obey anyone. Hearing this, Mac Dougal then became annoyed and was about to shoot him, but Fiena got in the way, so he decided to leave. Knowing that Mac Dougal was only using Fiena, Magic asked her to come with him to leave the village. However, she refused by saying that she couldn't leave the forest. She then takes him to meet Orphan, who is locked up in a holding cell, where Orphan seems unable to move his body after being mentally attacked by the Deep Dragon. However, Orphan realized that Fiena had healed him, so he thanked her. But then, Salua arrived there and then knocked down Magic. Salua knows Orphan is from the Tower of Fongs, calls him by his real name, Krylon Silo, and tries to kill him. However, Orphan finally managed to move his body, got up, and dodged Salua's attack. Salua then took out a glass sword which Orphan immediately recognized as a rare sword that only a few existed in the entire continent. He is an assassin from the Kimluk Church, usually referred to as the Death Instructor. However, just as they were about to start the fight, Klaam arrived there and hit Salua on the head until he fainted. Orphan asked Klaam to leave, but she refused because she thought he just wanted to get rid of her. He also openly said that she would only be a burden because she couldn't use magic or have fighting abilities, so it would be safer for her to leave immediately. Because Klaam didn't want to obey Orphan, Fiena was forced to use her power to control Klaam's mind so that she would leave. Fiena then asked Orphan to take Magic and Salua out of the village. Even though Salua was a murderer, he was the only person who treated Fiena very well, so she was indebted to him and didn't want him to get hurt. Fiena had found out that Salua was the death instructor of the Kimluk Church after reading his mind. She also knew that his mission in coming to this village was to kill Mac Dougal, who used to be the death instructor of the Kimluk Church, just like him. However, she did not know what goal Mac Dougal wanted to achieve by worshipping the Deep Dragon. Because of that, she would still go on to search the heart of this forest with Mac Dougal, hoping to find out what he was doing. Orphan, who heard Fiena's words, tried to stop her because it could endanger her life. However, she seemed to have accepted the consequences and would face them at any cost. He then said he would help her and would not let her die just like that. He then took Salua's glass sword and forced him to bring it to Mac Dougal. Arriving there, Orphan asked Mac Dougal to free Fiena while telling him that Salua was an envoy of the Kimluk Church and was ordered to kill him. Hearing this, Salua then attacked Orphan for revealing his identity. However, he can easily take down Salua and Mac Dougal, who try to shoot him. Orphan then asked Mac Dougal why he was so obsessed with getting to the forest's heart. Mac Dougal revealed that he wanted magic power that could surpass the dragons. He then tried to shoot Orphan, but the gun instead hurt him fatally. At the end of his life, Mac Dougal told Orphan that he had seen something in the Kimluk Church whose power could destroy the entire continent. However, when Orphan was about to inquire further, Mac Dougal had already died. Elsewhere, Cleom, who was with the rangers in the forest, was surprised by the appearance of a small animal that turned out to be the child of the Deep Dragon. Because it looked adorable, she then carried the little animal. However, the rangers ran in fear because they thought that the Deep Dragon must be not far from there. Meanwhile, the villagers who know Mac Dougal has died chase Orphan because they think he has killed their village leader. At the same time, Fiena received a warning from the Deep Dragon to run away from the village because the Deep Dragon will soon destroy the village to punish the villagers, who will continue Mac Dougal's desire to find the forest's heart to obtain magical powers that can surpass the dragons. Orphan finally reunited with Magic during his escape, and they tried to escape using teleportation magic. Even though they could only move about 10 meters away, they managed to avoid the villagers who wanted to catch them. However, not long after, they were surprised by an attack from the Deep Dragon who wanted to destroy the village. At the same time, Cleom arrived at the village carrying the child of the Deep Dragon that she had found in the forest. She then told Orphan that the little animal was the son of the Deep Dragon. Orphan, who was trying to protect the villagers, tried to fight the Deep Dragon, even though his magic power was not commensurate with the Deep Dragon, a celestial being. He then threatened to kill the child of the Deep Dragon if the creature did not stop its attack. However, the Deep Dragon didn't seem to care as she said that she could resurrect the living creatures that had died, just like she had done with Fiena who she found lifeless in the middle of the forest. The Deep Dragon then revived Fiena and gave her a little magic power to become an intermediary who could communicate with her. She sent her to watch Mac Dougal, who was after the magic power from the heart of the forest. Because his threat didn't work, Orphan again prepared to launch an attack on the Deep Dragon. However, again the Deep Dragon could easily take him down with a mental attack through telepathy. Even so, Orphan finally knew the weakness of the Deep Dragon's attack, which was none other than through her eyes. Because of that, he then asked Magic to use his magic power to obscure the Deep Dragon's view, 
so Orphan finally managed to bring down the Celestial Being with his magic power. However, the Deep Dragon only received minor injuries and then bounced back to attack them. But then, Fiona arrives there and asks Deep Dragon not to destroy the village and kill everyone. She even threatened to overthrow the Deep Dragon because she also had her magic power. Hearing this, the Deep Dragon became furious and attacked her until she was knocked down and collapsed in front of Orphan and his companions. Seeing the injured Fiona, Cleon did not just stay silent and asked the child of the Deep Dragon to fight its mother. Unexpectedly, it turned out to have the dragon's magical power which was even capable of destroying the Deep Dragon, which was its own mother. The next day, Orphan and his companions prepared to continue their journey and said goodbye to Fiena and the villagers planning to start a new life elsewhere. After the Deep Dragon died, Cleon decided to adopt the child of the Deep Dragon, which she later named Lakey. Orphan and his companions try to get along with Lakey's presence. Sometime later, they finally arrived at the town of Tophram, and it didn't take long to reach the Tower of Fongs. The scene then switches and shows a man killing one of the black sorcerers from the Tower of Fongs, but as it turned out, the killer man was also a black sorcerer. Meanwhile, in the Tower of Fongs, a commotion was going on because several elderly wizards were found murdered. Because of that, the other elders urged the greatest magicians to investigate the case. Forde then stated that the incident began when Childman and the strongest black sorcerers went on a mission to subdue the dragon Azali, which made the Tower of Fongs lose many of their greatest magicians. Forde then went to his office and met with Letitia, who asked about the dragon Azili they had conquered. However, he was reluctant to answer her question by saying they had much more important and urgent matters. Forde, who had gathered some clues regarding the murder of the mage elders, told her that he had obtained information regarding the traits of the assassin who were very similar to orphans. Forde said Orphan also had a strong reason to kill the wizard elders because he might want to avenge Azili's death. Forde and the black sorcerers didn't seem to know that the dragon that died was Childman while Azili, who was in his body, had disappeared somewhere. Forde then asked Letitia to help him catch Orphan. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Cleom uses Lakey's power to attack Magic only because he says that her cooking is not delicious. <laughs> Due to the mess they caused, Orphan had to report to the ranger post and apologize. Luckily, the ranger standing guard there did not report him and his companions to the Kimluck Church, even though the man knew that Orphan was a magician. However, not long after Orphan left the ranger post, he realized that his necklace had disappeared, and someone had killed the ranger. He also looked surprised because he didn't feel the presence of anyone there besides himself. Orphan later found his necklace hanging along with a written message stuck into the wall with a knife. Soon after, a man attacked Orphan and his companions, destroying his carriage. Magic tried to counterattack, but the attack didn't work on him at all. Even that man could easily take them down at once and switch places using teleportation magic. Orphan then asked Clean not to let her guard down and stay focused on Lakey because right now, Lakey was the strongest among them, and their only hope was to beat the man. Orphan then asked the man's identity because the teleportation magic used by the man was Childman's magic that was only taught to his students in the Tower of Fawns. However, the man did not answer Orphan's question and instead repeated the words he wrote in the previous message. Knowing that the man was the one who had killed the ranger, Orphan became angry and attacked him. Unfortunately, the man could outperform Orphan and bring him down again. Cleom then asked Lakey to attack the man. Yet, that only caught Lakey off guard because he couldn't attack and protect her and Magic at the same time. Because of that, the man then launched a fatal attack on them. Orphan, who did not have time to save his friends, assumed they had died in the attack. But as it turned out, the man's attack missed because Letitia got there just in time to save Magic and Cleom. Letitia then revealed the face of the man who looked much like Orphan when he was still a student at the Tower of Fongs five years ago. Feeling pressed by her presence, the man finally fled from there. After that, Orphan and his companions headed to the city of Tophram with Letitia, who then told about the murder of the wizarding elders that had happened frequently recently. In the Tower of Fongs, the remaining 15 mage elders are meeting to discuss the murder incident against their comrade, where the elders suspect that the Kimluck Church is the mastermind behind the murder incident. Meanwhile, Forde is communicating with Harsha through telepathy, where Harsha tells him that he has not been able to locate Childman's whereabouts. Because of that, he then guessed that Childman might have been killed, and the only ones who could do that were Orphan or Azali, the most talented mages among them. Because they suspected that Azali had died, Forde had named Orphan the main suspect. The scene then switches and shows Letitia bringing Orphan and his companions to her house, asking them to stay there for a while. While looking through old photos of them when they were little and raised in the same orphanage, 
Orphan saw Letitia who was about to go to the Tower of Fongs to report to Forte that Orphan was not the suspect they were looking for. That night, Orphan plans to tell Letitia about what happened to Azalea and Childman. But then, the killer they were looking for suddenly appeared at Letitia's residence, telling Orphan that he had lost his powers long ago. The killer man then introduces himself as Krylon Silo, the ghost from Orphan's past. Hearing that, Orphan also confirmed that the man was not him because Krylon Silo five years ago would not have killed anyone else. However, Krylon Silo said that Orphan did not deserve to be Childman's successor because he could not kill other people. Therefore, the fake Krylon Silo said he was the heir that Childman wanted. After that, the fake Krylon Silo then disappeared from Orphan's presence. However, unbeknownst to both of them, Cleom turned out to be behind Orphan and overheard their conversation. The next day, Cleom tries to find the fake Krylon Silo along with Lakey. On the other hand, Orphan assumed that this was Azalee's doing who sent someone similar to him to spread terror and commit murder. Not long after, Letitia came over to Orphan and introduced two of her students named Tiffies and Patricia. Tiffies and Patricia told Orphan that they had just met two boys who claimed to know him. However, they locked the two in the warehouse because it looked very suspicious. When Orphan meets them there, it turns out that they are the twin dwarves, Volcan and Dorton. He said he would release them if they were willing to do something for him. They were asked to patrol the city. However, they instead met with Cleon. Meanwhile, Letitia tells Orphan that chaos has happened since Childman disappeared. Internal conflicts often occur in the Tower of Fongs. She assumed that many of the black sorcerers wanted to replace Childman as one of the highest-ranking mages in the Tower of Fong's leadership ranks, as well as the wizarding associations of the entire continent. They also wanted to get rid of Childman's protégés, one of whom was Forde, who nearly died from being poisoned. Forde is also being targeted because, at this time, he is replacing Childman temporarily. It didn't stop there. The situation became even more chaotic with the appearance of the fake Krylon Silo and also the incident of killing the Witch Elders. Hearing that, Orphan stated that only two people could freely enter and exit the Tower of Fongs without getting caught up in Forde's surveillance technique called the Childman Network, and those two were himself and Childman. Letitia also wondered if Childman was the mastermind behind all this chaos, considering that Orphan had proven himself not the culprit. He witnessed that Childman's soul and Azalea's dragon body had been destroyed and said that Childman was not the culprit because he would never return. Elsewhere, Cleom, who was relaxing with Volcan and Dorton, encountered a group of worshippers of the dragons who happened to be passing by them. Unexpectedly, one of those people is the fake Krylon Silo who then makes Lakey and Cleom unconscious and kidnaps them. Vulcan and Dorton then reported the matter to Magic, who took them to meet Orphan. The dwarves tell him that the fake Krylon Silo took Lakey and Cleom to Childman's house. Magic, who didn't know that Krylon Silo was Orphan's true identity, then asked Letitia who explained that Krylon Silo was one of the talented magicians who was Childman's student. However, Letitia did not reveal that Krylon Silo was Orphan's real name. Orphan, who decided to face the fake Krylon Silo alone, rushed to Childman's house. Meanwhile, Magic, who was forced to stay at Letitia's house to wait for Orphan, is approached by Tiffies who then tells Orphan's past and reveals that his real name is Krylon Silo. Tiffies tells Magic that five years ago, Orphan was chosen as one of the royal wizard candidates and was under Childman's control, one of the strongest wizards of unknown origin. As the most talented of his friends, Orphan was later chosen to be Childman's successor, and he taught Orphan all his skills and techniques in magic. In the end, Orphan was chosen to become a royal mage and prepared to leave the Tower of Fongs to head for the palace. However, the Tower of Fongs, who didn't want to lose one of the greatest magicians, had planned something to get Orphan out of the way as the chosen candidate by having someone attack him. Because he acted recklessly and caused someone to die, Orphan was finally eliminated as a royal mage candidate and decided to leave the Tower of Fongs. After learning about Orphan's past, Magic decides to help the teacher. So did Letitia. Tiffies then warned that their safety would be threatened if they were involved with him. However, she didn't care because he was her most precious little brother to her. She asked Tiffies to respect Orphan. Meanwhile, Orphan finally arrives at Childman's residence and is confronted by the fake Krylon Silo, who indirectly reveals that Azili sent him so that she could regain her lost powers five years ago. However, Azili did not expect the fake Krylon Silo to be selfish causing chaos and ambitions to be the only Krylon Silo for Azalee by killing Orphan. The police are already there to arrest them when they get into a fierce fight. But then, Letitia and Magic arrived, revealing that she would take care of everything. During the fight, the fake Krylon Silo reveals that Childman has passed on the ancient magic, killing doll, to Azalee. Killing doll is a technique in magic that can turn a doll into a killing machine simply by writing certain spells on the doll's body. The fake Krylon Silo is a killing doll, 
where Azalee then uses the power of the Sword of Baltenders to make her form like Orphan five years ago and has the same power as him at that time. Orphan has a hard time dealing with the fake Krylon Silo because he has the power of the Sword of Baltenders. However, with a strong determination to protect his friends, he finally defeated the fake Krylon Silo and became the only real Krylon Silo. But then, Azalee arrived there and appeared in front of Orphan. She then said that she did not know about her killing doll, who had her consciousness and acted as she pleased by killing many innocent people. Yet, Orphan, who had hated her since she killed Childman, didn't necessarily believe her words and challenged her fight with him. However, Azalee refuses to fight with Orphan because she realizes she cannot defeat him who is Childman's sole heir. She then reveals that Childman chose Orphan to be his heir because he has the potential to defeat the White Sorcerer who is none other than her. Confidently, Azalee told Orphan she had a great chance to beat Childman with the white magic she had mastered. Because of that, Childman prepares him and teaches him all skills to Orphan so he can kill her. However, Orphan did not believe Azalee's words because, according to him, Childman would have known that he would not be able to kill her who he considered his sister. Orphan then invited Azalee to come back and live with him and Letitia. But she refuses, saying that she has a plan to find out what Childman thinks about all this. After that, Azalee offered Orphan to join her. But because he refused, she decided to leave and told him she was going to the Kimlock Church. Letitia and Magic finally arrive and find Orphan unconscious, while Azalee's whereabouts are unknown. Elsewhere, in the headquarters of the Worshippers of Dragons, a man commits a massacre of Worshippers of the Dragons because he wants a map belonging to the Browning family. However, the man did not find the map there, as one of them told him that it had been handed over to Childman. After that, at Letitia's house, Orphan, who had just left the room, was suddenly attacked by a masked man who also asked about the map belonging to the Browning family. However, the masked man fled after Cleom and Magic arrived to take Orphan to dinner. The next day, Orphan met Letitia and told her he was going to the Tower of Fongs because Magic wanted to become a magician and study magic there. He then tells her that the fake Krylon Silo is a killing doll. But Orphan did not tell that Azalee was the one who created the fake Krylon Silo. Letitia then handed him a piece of paper which turned out to be a certificate that she had guaranteed him for five years, in which he was still listed as the official black sorcerer, and left the Tower of Fongs because he had to carry out a mission. That way, Orphan wouldn't lose the high mage rank he had earned as one of Childman's students. On the other hand, Magic is seen reading a book he accidentally found while at Childman's house to help Orphan. He then showed the book to Cleon because it was written in an ancient language that he mostly did not understand. She explains that the book contains magic spells about changing the world order and creating new worlds. In the middle of the conversation, Orphan and Letitia came to them and told Magic to get ready because they were going to the Tower of Fong soon, while Cleon would stay home with Tiffy's and Patricia. On their way to the Tower of Fongs, Orphan and his companions were attacked by the Worshippers of the Dragons. Since they weren't magicians, Orphan fought them without using magic power, relying only on his physical abilities. Orphan noticed that his strength had increased after defeating the fake Krylon Silo, which meant that Azalee was telling the truth. When he asks why the Worshippers of the Dragons attacked them, one of the men tells them that they only want revenge because a black sorcerer has massacred their friends. But then, the black sorcerer that the man was referring to arrived and killed the man worshipping the dragons right in front of Orphan. After that, the man introduced himself as Hydrant and admitted that he had known Orphan for a long time. Orphan then attacked Hydrant, but he managed to dodge Orphan's attack with ease. He then informed that he was sent there to escort Letitia and Orphan, who was about to head to the Tower of Fongs. Once there, one of Forday's men, Finby, tells Letitia that she must help with Magic's registration process while Orphan is asked to meet Forday in his office. After meeting with Orphan, Forday asked him where Childman was, but he refuses to tell Forday and keeps the truth of what happened between Childman and Azalea secret. Forday then tells Orphan that Finn B is a spy for one of the magic masters in the Tower of Fongs named Curley, who wants to take over Childman's power in the Tower of Fongs and the Witch Association. Because of this, he asks Orphan to help him defeat Curley and his minions before they finish off Childman's students, including Orphan. Forday also reveals the lie that Hydrant wrote in the report about the attack incident where Hydrant wrote that Orphan had massacred all the worshippers of the dragons. The truth is, Orphan can take them all down without the need to use magic power. He was very angry because Hydrant had dared to twist the facts. Because of that, he then went to Curlane and said that the Hydrant had killed the worshippers of the dragons. However, Curlane seemed unconcerned as he said that his men found them lifeless. Orphan then warned him not to touch Letitia and Magic, but he countered Orphan's words by warning him not to make him an enemy. In the afternoon, when Orphan and his companions were about to return to Letitia's house, they were surprised to find Cleom lying on the road with a wound on her head. Tiffy's informs them that a masked man attacked her. 
However, the man immediately fled before they could strike back. Patricia said the masked man was wearing a special combat uniform usually worn by the Tower of Fung's black sorcerers. Hearing this, Orphan became reminded of the masked man who had attacked him at Letitia's house some time ago. On the other hand, Letitia apparently couldn't contain her anger over the consecutive attacks, especially now that they dared to attack civilians who didn't have magical powers like the worshippers of the dragons and Cleon. Therefore, Letitia decided to explore the area around her residence to find the masked man's whereabouts so that no one else was injured and ordered Orphan to take Cleom to the house. Arriving at the house, Orphan then healed Cleom with his magic power. After confirming that Cleom had recovered, Orphan asked Magic and Tiffys to look after her while he went to help Letitia. Elsewhere, Letitia finally finds the masked man in an old abandoned building. Unexpectedly, she had to deal with two masked men, who turned out to be Hydrant and one of Curlane's students, a man named Swain. Hydran immediately asked Letitia about the map belonging to the Brownings, as he assumed it was kept by one of Childman's students. Letitia, who didn't know about the map the Hydran was referring to, tried to attack them with her fire magic power. Seeing this, he ordered Swain to cut Letitia's throat so she could not cast magic spells. <laughs> Letitia launched a fatal attack at Swain, but he could withstand the attack without even being injured. He counterattacked and pushed her until finally, Hydrant came forward to slit her throat. However, Letitia managed to free herself from Swain and Hydrant's ambush, although she was seriously injured and lost several of her fingers in the process. When Swain was about to kill Letitia, who was seriously injured, suddenly someone who was also wearing the uniform of the Black Sorcerer appeared, which turned out to be Azalee. She wanted to protect Letitia and prepared to attack Hydrant and Swain. However, the two of them, who knew how tough Azalee was in battle because she could use white magic, decided to run away from there. Not long after, Orphan arrived there and found Letitia unconscious. He immediately brought her to the house and healed her. Letitia, who thought that Orphan was the one who had saved her, then thanked him. But then, she said that she had heard Azalee's voice and thought that maybe she was hallucinating. Hearing this, Orphan felt sure that Azalee had saved Letitia, but he didn't tell her. He then told her that he had succeeded in connecting her fingers to return to normal as before. Yet, he admitted that he was not very gifted with healing magic so that it would leave a permanent scar on her finger. However, Letitia didn't mind it and still thanked Orphan. Because they had dared to hurt those closest to him, Orphan couldn't hold back his patience and was determined to take revenge on Hydrant and the others. However, Letitia prevented Orphan and asked him to contact Forde and tell him everything so that he could report to the Wizard Elders about Hydrant's action and all of Curlane's students involved in the attack. She hopes that they will receive the appropriate punishment. She then thought of Comic-Con and said that if he were still alive, he would be able to heal her wound very well without leaving a mark. Letitia told Orphan that after comic died, Corgan, one of comic closest friends, suddenly decided to leave the Tower of Fongs for unknown reasons. Letitia then begged Orphan not to leave her because right now, the only remaining Childman students in the Tower of Fongs were her and Forde. That night, in Letitia's yard, Orphan meets Azali who tells him about the map belonging to the Browning family that Hydrant and the Curlane students are looking for. She said it was not a map but a magic book belonging to the King of Magic named Swadenborch. A long time ago, the people of the Kimluck Church found the magic book, but because the Kimluck Church hates witches so much, they entrusted the book to the Browning family, whose head of the family is one of the top brass in the Kimluck Church. But then, the book changed hands again until it was finally reported to be in Childman's hands. Curlane wanted to get the magic book because it contained the strongest magic spell he would later use to control the Tower of Fongs. Azeli also informed that the book Hydrant and Curlane's students were looking for was now in Magic's hands. Before leaving, she asked Orphan to prepare himself because Hydrant and the others might come to pick up the book. On the other hand, unbeknownst to them, Cleom overheard their conversation. After that, Orphan asked Magic and Cleom to get ready because they were going to the Tower of Fong soon. The three managed to infiltrate there, but the Hydrant found out where they were and attacked Orphan. He tried to attack Orphan with his sword, but Orphan ran away instead leading Hydrant to another place for a one-on-one -on -one duel with him. Hydrant turns out to be the one who was attacked by Orphan to death when he tried to prevent Orphan from becoming a royal wizard five years ago. He doesn't care about the magic book and joins the mission because he wants to take revenge on Orphan, who has injured his face. When they got into a fierce fight, Finn B managed to find the whereabouts of Cleom and then attacked her. However, Lakey did not stay silent and used his power to attack Finn B. On the other hand, Magic had to face Swain. Even though he was a novice mage who only learned magic from Orphan, Magic could withstand the attacks of Swain, the Black Sorcerer. But then, Swain managed to snatch the magic book that Magic brought and knocked him down. When Swain was about to kill Magic, Forde arrived and immediately attacked him all out, until finally, Swain decided to run away. 
Elsewhere, Orphan finally manages to take down the Hydrant and intends to kill him for daring to hurt Letitia. However, Cleom arrived there and tried to convince him that he was not a murderer until finally, he let Hydrant live. After that, Orphan and Cleom headed to where Curlane and his students had managed to get the magic book brought by Magic. However, the magic book turned out to be Cleom's diary that Orphan had deliberately altered to trick Curlane's students. Curlane was furious and then ordered his students to kill Orphan. But then, Forde and Magic arrived there to help him. Forde then told Curlane that he and his students were guilty of all their crimes. Forde had forced the Hydrant to confess his actions and admitted it in writing in exchange for the Hydrant being kept alive and leaving the Tower of Fongs. After that, Azalee surprisingly appeared at that place. Curlane, who knows she is still alive, then tries to attack her. However, Orphan didn't just stay silent and used Childman's technique to make Curlane unable to use magic forever. After that, Azili used her white magic to erase Curlane and his students' memories of her being alive. The anime ends with Curlane and his henchmen being captured by Forde and will be tried for the crimes they have committed. The moral that can be learned from this anime is, that a true friend is someone who is always by our side in good times and bad and always reminds us if we make a mistake. True friends will also accept us back if we admit our mistakes and are determined to improve.